Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna be drawing Leonardo from the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And somebody in my comments on my last video asked, can you use this method on uh, drawing a Ninja Turtle? So, um, and the method I was talking about is just your structure lines when you're drawing from imagination. So I'm just gonna do a quick structure of Leonardo and then I'm gonna render it and uh, yeah, you can kind of see, you know, how I might approach just drawing a random character or something like that. So um, obviously I'm gonna start with the head. Uh, I'm gonna think a little bit about my pose. Uh, just Leonardo's kind of, you know, the stick up his butt kind of character in the show. He's very uh, structured and he's the leader. So he's always kind of a little bit pompous. Uh, so I'm gonna give him a very upright uh, pose. Um, obviously incorporate his sword somehow. So, um, and normally I would do a few different like sketches uh, of this. Uh, so let's just, just start off with the head. So oval head, um, I'm gonna do like a little gesture line for maybe the, the body chest. Actually, I want that chest to come out. So like that, do his head right here. Obviously it's kind of like a sideways head because turtles have that uh, that oval head. So I'm gonna sketch in a torso right here. Uh, as you can see, I kind of like did it as a little bit of an angle like this. Uh, that's because I want his chest really forward. I'm gonna drop his hips kind of in here. Arm. Uh, we'll do shoulder right here. We'll have, I'm gonna have one arm kind of coming up like this. And I'm gonna have his sword, I'll have him with one sword behind his head. So, kind of like that. Just a square for his fist, might even do the sword hilt kind of coming up behind him. Just put that in there real quick. This arm. I'll have this kind of just coming out like that. Down there. Maybe across. Hmm. I don't know. We'll see. Let's see. Coming across, I don't like that. I don't like that. Coming across like that. I think I'll do just more of a natural thing like this. Kind of a wide stance, draw his pelvis in there. like more wide stances on my character, so a little bit more of a athletic pose, I guess is what you'd call it. And then I have his head angled down like this. The neck kind of coming into his chest like that. And yeah, call that good. Do his knee right here. I have this leg more straight down. A little bit more straight down. And I think this arm will be a lot more effective if I get this right. I'm gonna have his hand really angled and like that. Then that kind of gives his sword no real place to go. So I gotta make sure the angle of the sword is coming out at you a little bit, like in front of his knee. And this one back here like this boom so 
Uh, let's give him longer swords. Let's exaggerate him a bit. I mean, he's a turtle. He's got way more strength than a regular person, so he can hold uh, larger than average katanas. Let's just do that. Okay, so, um, yeah, uh, I like that. That's cool. Okay, so that's that's my pose. I'm sticking with that. Uh, that is just basically the underdrawing. Uh, now we're gonna like add the skin. I'll add all the fun stuff, the muscles, the the armor, all that cool stuff. So um, I'm gonna have yeah. So now it's kind of a point where I get a like this is the fun part. Like this is the part where you get to add a ton of cool stuff on there. Um, so what kind of armor do I want Leonardo to have? He's obviously got to have the sword things, like his um, his bands that kind of come across him. I give my turtles a little bit more of a jawline than like the cartoon turtles. Because I just want them to be a little bit more sleek. Um, eyes are going to be really small. Draw his brows in there. Mad face. His brows come up above his bandana. We're going to do a big ol' um, and I got a lot of room over here so I think I'll have him have super long um, like ties that kind of float behind him like this. caught up in the wind and these are super organic I always try and uh, I mean I, I if I if I do a good job on them it's because I got a little bit lucky I kind of let them do their own thing um, a lot of times I like them to kind of go behind each other have a couple sharp angles on one like that. And those are super long, obviously exaggerated just cause, just cause I can make that choice and I get to do whatever I want. Uh, so this hand, the thumb is in front right here. He's got three, actually I think they only have two fingers. Two fingers is so weird though. I'm going to give him, yeah, should I give him three? Ah, whatever. I'll give him two. Seems like it would be really hard to hold things with just two fingers, though. But let's do it anyway, because that's the way they're done. Uh, this so this is just you know drawing for years you kind of get a idea of anatomy have this kind of make them really like high waisted um, I'm gonna have two plates coming in on his hips right here on this side and then a really long kind of like samurai plate coming down low like this on each of these legs and then a big old belt buckle and I might do a wood texture on this thing we'll have the 
this be like big old cloth, loincloth slash diaper thing. <laughs> loincloth. Knees in there. I'm going fairly quickly on this one. A um, little bit more time than my uh, 20 minute sketches on this one since I will be rendering this one completely. Just got those two big toes. Give them bigger feet because. You want him to have a good balance. He's got to be standing sturdy on something. Okay, chest plates coming across here like this. Throw some muscles and ribs in there and boom okay so this is what I got everything's kind of laid out um, his neck is a little thin for my taste I want him to be a little bit more muscular so let's try and widen that out a little bit real sleek eyes lots of wrinkles in his bandana give some edge to that over there kind of wraps around his head might fix this eye with some white I didn't want it to be that big, but once I start adding shading, I think that'll really uh, make that sit back a little bit further. So right now I'm gonna start shading this sucker. And so shading takes a long time. Um, you guys know that if you've ever drawn for any amount of time. Rendering is the big time sink. So let's just get to it. Uh, you guys can see, <clears throat> I mean, you get a gist of the drawing at this point, uh, how all those structure lines and everything trying to just kind of help me piece this guy together. Uh, that tricep needs to end a little bit shorter because it is sucked up into him. So at this stage, it becomes all about, you know, executing a good light source, uh, And yeah, as far as the, you know, taking it to that next level, always get to this point and it is the benefit of doing those structure lines where you can see if you're actually going to like the drawing or not. Um, so if I didn't like this pose, I would just scrap it and start over again. So. I do like it. The only thing that's bugging me a little bit is this arm over here. I don't know if it feels like, it feels really stiff, which isn't too bad. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see once it's rendered. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Uh, I am gonna give him some forearm braces that kind of come across like this. Obviously, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I'm using um, blue big pin for Leo. If I do any more of these, I'll like like I'll, I'll use red for um, Raphael, purple for 
Donatello. Let's give him some straps across this bottom arm. And uh, it'll be kind of a theme, which I think it'll be kind of cool. I'm gonna give him more like a symbol versus uh, the standard L that the one things have. So it's still like an L, but maybe this is a sunrise or something like that, some kind of symbol. I'll do that maybe for all of them. Okay, so yeah, now I'm just start rendering. Make sure I have to do it one. Okay, so I'm actually gonna add my shadows in this is kind of me just experimenting because i want to do something i'm going to uh, use an r914 um this is an artify marker alcohol marker i'm going to do some shadows on him just to get some darks on there and see what that actually does to the drawing i like the smooth um shadows on this kind of as a contrast to the the big pen that's you know I'm using to do a little bit more line work so this is you know a risky thing especially in the video could end up horrible I mean I've done it a ton of times but I had planned on just doing this video has um, just big pinch, but I looked at it and said, you know what? I think it might look really cool with some shadows, so I'm just gonna take that risk. If you watch my other videos, this is 70 pound paper uh, versus the uh, 80 pound white paper I was using before. So I'm kind of curious as to what kind of effect that'll have on the drawings I do, or at least the markers anyway. I like that contrast kind of cutting across. This leg is gonna be like almost all in shadow over here. This will give us a nice foundation. Um, of stability for the whole drawing. Okay, what do you guys think? That worked out pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take um, R910, which is a lighter blue, and I'm gonna do another layer of kind of shadows and basically adding value to the illustration. Um, so like the swords, things like that, uh, just to get rid of some of that white. And I think it's gonna help make the character um, a little bit more modeled. You'll see it really start to stand out off the page, I think after this stage. So, and this is something I've kind of been thinking about implementing for a while and trying out. So like all of his skin, I'm gonna go over all of his skin. So it becomes a monochromatic illustration. Um, now when I work on tone tan paper, which if you follow the channel, I work on that a lot. This mid tone, this kind of middle tone is always on the paper, which is a great tool um, to help you get a full value range on things. Uh, if you're working on white paper, doing a method like this um, can help immensely. So let's see what this kind of does for the drawing. I think it's gonna help quite a bit getting that skin color kind of established. Um, and I could have, if I did a full color drawing, this would just be green. But since I want this to kind of be like a just a monochromatic illustration. I'm going with another blue. So, 
that helps quite a bit already. Now I'm gonna kind of go over next to some of these shadows with it as kind of another level of value. Especially on these little things. I'm leaving some white on there though because I don't want to get rid of all of it. And I feel like that really just brings the drawing to life. Um, I'm gonna do it on here too. Ooh, that really, it's really starting to pull that uh, big pin color into it a little bit. I'm actually gonna use it on everything that's white over on the right side of him. Anything that's kind of in shadow. Working in like monochromatic colors is always kind of fun. Definitely has a different aesthetic to it for sure. Okay, that's kind of cool. Okay, so got that done. Now actually what I've realized is some of the stuff I wanna go full dark on, like his, the handles on his sword. I think we need a little bit more contrast on this guy. Now that we've got a full kind of rendering going on, I'm gonna do the straps across his chest all the way black or as dark as we've gone. This isn't actually the darkest. The big pin actually goes darker. I'm do like a line around this thing. And then I'm gonna do these. The edges of these are gonna be all the way dark. Just like that. I'll help define them a little bit better, I think. And then these little bands right here, I'm gonna make dark too. It's really about a full value range at this point and just breaking up space on your drawing, really defining some of those edges and shapes a little bit better. Just like that. Cool thing about markers is, you know, you can go over areas that you just did and it'll darken because of the transparency. Let's actually do some shadows down by his feet real quick. This will help ground him quite a bit, I think. And bleed these out a little bit. Okay, so for this stage, I'm gonna be using a white jelly roller pin and I'm gonna be adding some kind of like highlights to him, bringing back some of those whites a little bit. Um, I realized I had made an anatomy mistake on this arm over here. Uh, so I did have to try and fix that right here, which, you know, sometimes I don't get it perfectly. It's because the upper part of the arm, I had a different idea than when I got to the, the hand and the bicep could never be that far up on the arm if the hand was rotated this direction. So I had to bring the bicep down a little bit more, which is fine. I can fix that like I did. I gotta bring the eyes back a little bit. Just like that. Add some highlights and some textures to this. The mask. Get 
get rid of some of these little lines that I didn't need. I don't want to get rid of them all, all of them though, because I like that texture that's in there. This is really going to help since I added that, um, that other blue color, the lighter blue. This is going to really start to add a full value range to the illustration, especially on these high points where light is touching. It'll be pretty subtle too, which is, I always like, I like subtle. Um, just kind of hitting these high edges. I still need to add a wood grain onto this side. Across the sword right here. See how I can just erase those unwanted scribble lines a little bit. Don't want to get rid of all of them though, just because I mean, like I've I think I've said this before, I like loose, kind of rougher looking artwork. I like to see um the artist process in artwork. I think it just adds something in today's day and age where everything is so clean and you know, there's, it's just nice to see stuff that's hand done. And I can knock some of those highlights down too if I just get a little bit crazy with them by going over those with another blue. So I don't really want those highlights on his mask to be that white anyway uh, because they, <clears throat> they're, you know, the mask is going to be made out of cloth. So even though I wanted to bring some light marks back into that, it won't be reflective, so I don't want them to be so bright. So I'm gonna knock those down just a bit, leave the uh, eyes. So now I'm going to kind of show you guys how I do a wood grain. And I've done this like a, so many times. Um, on trees, fantasy trees is where I really started uh, working on this. And really it's about going in and out of like dark cracks. So I might do a little crack like this and then on certain parts of it where the wood separates a little bit more, I'll add some little swirlies in there. Um, and then a lot of just little texture lines. It's really about just kind of feeling your way through it. You don't want to compete too much with um, your main dividing cracks with those smaller ones. And on the outsides, real light kind of scribbles and just etches in there. I need that to recede back a little bit. Sometimes there might be a big hole, maybe you took a sword slash or something in there. Sometimes I'll add little nail lines in there. That's kind of cool. And you can see that just really added like a nice wood texture to that leg plate. I'm gonna extend this out a little bit further. I feel like that kind of changed the shape of it a little bit. 
Now this side is all in shadow, so I'm not gonna add as much detail to this one over here. Um, I like that it's kind of subdued and kind of off this whole right leg and this side of him kind of blends into each other. Um, it doesn't compete with like the main area. I'm gonna add some kind of like skin texture, I think, to this leg over here. By doing that, I can take some of these scribbles and kind of make them look purposeful. I think on this right side of him, I'm gonna add a little bit more definition. But not so much so that it's like an outline, if that makes sense. Just give a little bit more weight to that right side of his body. Help define some of these edges a little bit more where I want them defined. Now we got another kind of wood, these little wooden things over here, a little swirly in there, some cracks, and just those little textures. Careful not to get too scribbly like I just did. Again, over on that side. To this white right here. I want to do this whole right side of his arm right here in white highlights. I have this come through here because I feel like I got some a little bit too dark on this edge over here and it's not making the lighting look convincing on his arm if that makes sense. Okay so now I'm just doing up uh, some final finishing touches on this, um, blending out some of uh, these areas where I want a little bit more like gradation, um, just making it a little bit more round. And I'm pretty happy with uh, the way this one turned out. Um, I haven't done like a fully monochromatic uh, drawing like this yet. So this was kind of actually a fun, exp I didn't intend to do this to be honest from the start of this video. Um, I actually was just gonna do only big pins, but I think uh, adding the markers and doing a full value scale just added a lot to it. I mean, the big pins still show through, um, they look cool. Uh, but I think adding those markers really like took this one to another level that I wasn't really expecting. Um, but anyway, yeah, um, I think I'm gonna do Raphael next because that'll be such a like contrast to the blue if I do the whole thing in a red monochromatic uh, look. Um, so yeah, but uh, you tone that down a little bit over there a little bit. That was, shouldn't have that. Looks like a um, kind of an indention in his arm, and it shouldn't. Should just be like a surface. That's what can happen if you get a little too harsh with uh, some of your shadows when they're not supposed to be. Get rid of some of these little lines in here. You can even cross hatch a little bit with the. Uh, the jelly roller pen. Do a little extend that vein down a little bit right there. Maybe attach that one right there. That one down. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it for this one. Uh, 
this was kind of a fun, like I said, fun surprise for me as well. I didn't intend to fully take this one this far, but um, I really like the uh, the result. Always can't fail, or it's always fun having or doing Ninja Turtles. They're always a, a fun character to draw. I don't know why that is. It, it, like I said, I think earlier, it's more like the nostalgia for me coming back to something I loved so much as a kid. Um, I have a little highlights to these little pins over here. Just like that. But uh, yeah, so that's it guys. Um, hope you like this video. Uh, based on the last video I did where I did a little bit more of a, I don't know, tutorial instructional type video, I'll be doing those more in the future. Um, you guys seem to really like that video. Sometimes, like my mo my wife always tells me, like, you know, the things you you're you don't think you know. There's there's people like me, and she's talking about herself that I don't know until you tell me. It seems like you think everybody knows this stuff, but not everybody does. So I always got to keep that in mind. Um, that sometimes you know you guys might not know some of this stuff that I just take for granted. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's the video. Hope you liked it and I will catch you guys later.